Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes, and I'm really happy you're with us today. This is going to be fun. My dear, lovely friends, there are some guests who really tickle our listeners' fancies, and our guest today is someone who did that to such an extent the first time he was here that several people, including our wonderful engineer, Sam, hoped we would have him back, and I wanted to have him back, too, so... Michael Peter Longevin is someone who took the 60s seriously, and I know that because I was in the 60s, too, and I took the series, the 60s, somewhat seriously, but I, um, let's just say I was the kind of person in the 60s who I did try pot, but I did not inhale. I was that kind of person, and Michael Peter dove right into everything that the 60s had to offer Plus, he did a whole lot more besides that I never would have dreamed of doing. He's now widely known in the fields of the occult, shamanic transformation, magic, mysticism, and some things that are completely, really undefinable. Michael Peter Longevin had, let's just say, some amazing experiences. He has greatly enhanced the way that many people view physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and social wellness today. At the core of his teachings lies the transformation of consciousness, a spiritual awakening that he sees as the next step in human evolution. So he works in consciousness, but because of his experiences, he does with it some things I really don't do with it. And an essential aspect of his awakening consists in transcending our ego-based state of consciousness. So you see, he and I are kind of in the same field, but again, he's doing things I would never dream of doing. He considers this to be a prerequisite, not only for personal happiness, but also for an ending of the violent conflict that's endemic now on our planet. Michael Peter is a visionary an entrepreneur who has studied with shamans, magicians, holy men, psychics, and others that I can't even define, frankly. He has written about many strange experiences as the publisher of what Book of the Month Club called the most open-minded magazine in the world, and I think that's an understatement. He was the host of the Magical Blend TV show, and he's been interviewed on many radio programs, including this one now. His writings have appeared in lots of anthologies and publications, and for all his life, Michael Peter Longevin has been traveling to and studying in many very exotic places. He's been conducting workshops and lecturing worldwide for large groups since 1985. He presently is co-owner and co-director of Longevin Axelson. I can't say that. Longevin Axelson Marketing and Social Media Productions in New Orleans, Louisiana. His book is called Travel Tales from Unknown Realities. And I love this book. I just have to tell you, I loved it. When he first sent it to me, though, I thought, yeah, right. I wasn't going to buy this for a minute, but I absolutely could not have put his book it down. I loved it to pieces. I've never known anyone else with the kind of raw courage this man has because other people may have thought about doing these things and seeking out some of these experiences. And the problem is, I know enough about what we call the supernatural to know that they're actually possible. But I also know enough about these things that never in my wildest imagination would I attempt any of them, any of them myself, because I know how dangerous they actually could be. I mean, not just, they couldn't just kill you. Let me put it to you this way. They couldn't only kill you. They could destroy you. But but no, our guest today has been an explorer of the supernatural as nobody else I never, ever have heard of. 
has been an explorer of the supernatural, and he has come back to tell the tales. I can recommend his book to you without reservation, because quite frankly, I loved it to pieces. Michael Peter, welcome. It's really great to have you back with us today. Oh, Roberta, thank you so much for having me back. It's such a joy to be interviewed by you. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. When I, I had, you know, put everything aside. We have a lot of people who re are recommended to us. And so we've had a lot of guests in between. And I sort of thought, I really got to have him back sometime. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, we got to have him back. And that was when I contacted you. And then when I brought out the notes again, I said, oh, my goodness, I really, really wanted to have you back. Thank and I, I looked over the notes and I remembered everything. And I said, oh, I can't wait. When are we going to talk again? So where do you want to start? I don't know. I guess I guess I like to start in saying I've been really blessed and guided all my life by a number of forces, um, protected by a number of forces. And uh, I, I wrote Travel Tales from Unknown Realities along with my other books basically to let people know uh, what is the quote in the Bible? Do these things, do these things in my name, and and you will achieve great. Uh, that's a total misquote. Um, but <laughs> I don't even. I couldn't even. I've read the Bible. Where it is, but what it amounts to is I can't even tell you where that comes from. So that's okay. What, what, what it amounts to is people are capable of miracles, and, and I've met so many people, and I've. And I've um, experienced so many miracles that I really want people to know if they choose to accept w what I've written, um, that they can do uh, and achieve and create whatever they want. Shape shifting, appearances, disappearances, all kinds of really weird, spooky things. You As I said seen, in your first show, I really been feel this. You've done that, had your ticket punched. You've done all these things. Yeah, my passport looks pretty good. It's not for a few of them. Uh, my, uh, when I said in your first show, that, that it really is something that I think is really important, that, that reality is um, much larger than most people think. And it can be compared to an onion. And we're in one, one little layer of that onion. And if we choose to explore, there's so many other dimensions to existence that we can explore and draw inspiration and experiences from. All right, let's go back to your beginning. You, you were what started you thinking about? In, I mean, you, you were. It was the time when everybody was exploring and mind stretching and all of this, what got you started thinking, I want to get to know shamans and I want to, I want to really stretch my mind. What started? A number of factors came together. I, I mentioned on your first show that I was, um, I was raised the, uh, born the son of a funeral director and a grandson of a funeral director. So I spent a lot of time growing up around funeral homes and, and cemeteries and, uh, got to know um, death and ghosts pretty intimately. Became great friends with, with one certain ghost at one point, made a deal with him, uh, Phineas Goodhue. And he, in order for me to let go of my human bone collection, he, uh, he promised me to lead me to many mystical secrets around the world. So Phineas has been a key factor in my existence. I also a ghost. He is a ghost. Okay. I, and he's going to lead you to weird stuff. Who leads me and guides me and to, to weird stuff on a regular basis. I um the, the book speaks about some of my early experiences. Uh early on in my teen years, I met and studied with the witches of Salem, Massachusetts. Um Lori Cabot uh still teaches there. She's I think in her late eighties. Um and and they have a number of magical skills that, that they've passed on. I, I was riding my pony in, in a forest and uh, experienced what I think to this day was a UFO abduction. Uh, so these series of experiences led me to know there was more going on. Um, the, 
than I than I um, had been taught, and and uh, I chose to figure out how I could learn about and experience more and more of them. So so it just was yeah, early on. You you met. It, it all started happening to you. It, it did. I, I was, you a, I was out, it, it sought you out, basically. It did. I was an avid reader because I was trying to understand the things I had bumped into. And, and uh, I came from a, a family of six and, and, and wanted to understand who I was and what the nature of, of uh, family and, and life was. And, and, uh, Ran across people like Edgar Casey and and Carlos Castaneda, who later became a friend. And um, uh, God, uh, the fellow who wrote the Cracking of the Cosmic Egg, uh, who later became a friend. Um, and and reading their materials growing up opened up uh, my mind and spirit to lots of possibilities. Right. And so you just, the more you learned, the more you had to learn. And the more I experienced, the more I wanted to experience. Right, right. I mean, I remember this part of the book. I remember the young seeker trying to, I and and I, I share that with, that, that was sort of my early life too. I, you kind of get drunk on it, but it, oh my goodness, there's, there's this much. You start wanting to know more and more and more. How much more can you learn? But I did it with books. I mean, you don't have to, like, experience it yourself. But there's something about the material world that the visceral experiences expand us and teach us things on a level that we just... I, I love reading. I love writing. But the the spoken language, the written language have their limitations and experience spasm passes. And so you started exploring the world. You started going. I did. I, my, my father wasn't much of a traveler. He, he was he was a businessman. And um, we had six kids, so it would have been expensive to travel a lot. So we stayed home in a small town in New England uh, in my growing years. Uh, when I got old enough in high school, I, I spent a summer hitchhiking across Canada where I met people and, and experienced ghosts who, who led me uh, to safe haven. Uh, having done that, I, I went on to, to uh, move to Boston when I finished high school to go to college and, and, uh, and had a, a Latin American study teacher who had just returned from Latin America and, and just infused me with, with a need um, to see uh, Latin America. So uh, I saved up my money and, and um, flew down to Peru where I experienced ghosts and gods and goddesses in Machu Picchu and Cusco and Lake Titicaca. Uh, having done that, I, 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 was, I met a number of people who told me when I came back, I should, uh, I should meet this shaman and that shaman uh, in the Amazon or the Andy Mountains. And, and so I returned many, many times for many experiences there. Uh, having experienced those, I, I wanted to see the rest of Latin America and the Caribbean and and, uh, and Europe um, and Africa and the Arab countries. So, so I've done a lot of that over the years. But you experienced some negative entities. Oh, they're out there. It's it's not like you turn over rocks. And, and you know you're going to find a pretty salamander. Um, if you if you use discretion, you turn over less rocks with ugly entities under them. Um, but being someone who wants to know more and is willing to gamble to get to do that, I, I've met a number of human and non-human negative entities and had some pretty dark experiences with a number of them. Uh, uh, when I say I'm lucky to be alive and sane, uh, I mean that from the, from the deepest part of my core. Uh, I, I, I have been told by a number of people I shouldn't be, and I know personally I, uh, I shouldn't be. 
Yeah, I remember I read the book. So uh, I. And I only put some of my life in it. <laughs> But, but 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 talk a little about that. Talk talk about meeting some some negative entities and sure. how you get out of it. Uh, well, how you get out of it? You know, you can resonate to this. I know you can. Uh, Christ energy, healing energy, higher vibrational energy, um, prayer. Well, will we'll just I mean, it's like the old vampire movies. It it it, it banishes the dark. Uh, there's also, I, I, I just watched a, a documentary on TV about the oldest uh, survivor of, of the um, concentration camps from World War II. She's 109 years old, and she said she was left in a pile of people they thought were dead. Uh, but she never thought she was going to join them in death. She believed she had great things yet to do. At 109, this woman is making a documentary about how wonderful her life has been. She was tortured and almost killed in a concentration camp. She lost her husband and son, but she never lost hope and belief in her destiny. Those are really strong things that make a real wow. difference. I can burn through. I think I'm kind of proof that they can burn through all kinds of threats and, and, and dangerous, dangerous situations. Um, when I was tied to a tree in, in northern Peru, uh, left naked to die, I, I just called for help until somebody came. Uh, and I believed somebody would come. Um, and he, for his first words, as I said on the other show, were, God, you're lucky they didn't kill you. <laughs> and, and I was. Um, um <laughs> yes <laughs> when when I've been attacked there were, there were there were a few times that reading that book that I thought this guy is crazy than anybody I have ever known thank you I I <laughs> that by more than one person and I couldn't really say <laughs> I mean I mean seriously you 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 were it was you you got into so many scrapes that that you and it's and so cheerfully too. I mean, it was like it was like you didn't seem to even understand. I, you I was yourself in a mess, it. and suddenly you were in such a mess. It was the forest gums. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I really have gone through life just looking for the next chocolate in the box of chocolates, yeah. uh, and and it served me well. I, I actually, there's a scene in Forest Gump where he stands at the Washington Moor Memorial and talks to Richard Nixon. And I swear they stole that scene from me because I was there protesting in the 60s and talked to Richard Nixon. Uh, <laughs> so there's overlap. <laughs> Unbelievable. But no, I mean, I, I remember that scene where they tied you to the tree. And they get the yeah. Lord. Yeah. No, it's... um. I think I mentioned on the other show, I generally do that. My wife uh, is from Sweden and she's, um, she, she's, uh, she's practiced the old ways of Seda, which is witchcraft in, uh, of the old Viking nature. And, and um, she's taught me skills. It was wonderful meeting and coming together. She had written books on Swedish magic in Swedish, in Sweden. And, and when we got together and started comparing notes, because I had studied Western occultism and mysticism and, and uh, shamanism, um, we uh, came to magic in such different ways. Uh, and and she taught me many things. And one of them was basically like I experienced in Haiti when I was there, the the, the possession of, of other entities and, and how to open yourself up to that. And, and it's a skill. And I've had some amazing experiences and and expanded my views of reality far beyond what I had before that. I, I write about some of our experiences and, and travel tales to, from unknown realities, but um, sometimes you get out there and you're surrounded by a bunch of dark entities who want to eat your soul. And well, That's and, what I mean. That's why it, there's things worse than death. People need to exactly. understand that. Yeah, no, no, you don't. And, and But if you do understand that fear is our worst enemy in most cases, uh, fear, doubt, insecurity, and that if you stand true 
and your belief and you shine your inner light that you can come out of most situations, not yes. all. I mean, yes. I've lost friends along the way, but most situations you can come out of. Um, and not that everybody needs to. Most people don't do things my way or have my experiences. But no, no. no. People, don't try this at home, everyone. Don't well, ever I try this. Had a friend. When, when one of my books came out, The Secrets of the Ancient Incas, I, des I described a number of my experiences in the Andy Mountains and, and the Amazon jungle. And, um, I, I was speaking at a, 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 a speaking event and this woman came up to me and she said, I read your book and I tried to go to all the places you went to. I, I almost died. And, and, and I didn't find all the things you found. <laughs> and, and I said, I never told anyone to do that. I never expected anyone to do that. I'm really glad to meet you. <laughs> Thank you for complimenting me so much. But no, it's my experiences, my times, my energy. So it was my way that I experienced them. Um, I, I'm, I'm recommending your, that people read thought. your book. I'm recommending that nobody try the things you've tried. Well, I, I'll go as far as to say some of the things are very harmless and safe and, and can expand people's um, way of living. So those they should, but the the extreme ones, nah. Yeah, <laughs> no. But but I have to say they're fun to read about. But but the reason that I'm recommending your book is that you you are you came through everything safely, and nobody you know no no animals were harmed in making this movie. It's it's yep. one of it's one of yep. those books. You, well, I do write the book about Ante Tete. And, and I'm in, living in New Orleans now. Auntie Tete had been a slave here in New Orleans and a voodoo worker after she was freed from being a slave. Auntie Tete was trapped in another dimension and she came through to me because uh, we had some past comic um, connection and she actually made me kill a chicken as a, as a sacrifice to her. Um, so there was one animal killed. Oh dear! <laughs> well, but, I, I, but most of us have had a chicken salad sandwich, so that, I, I, I I don't know that that's anyway. It was just right, it was right, hot right. And, then, and I was affected. But uh, Auntie JT and I work things out. She doesn't make me do that anymore, and she and, and she advises me from time to time. Oh my lord! This is just so amazing, honestly. <laughs> But talk about one of the things I think people would be curious about is shape shifting. I mean, you've actually seen people change shape before your eyes. Yeah, I've, I've seen probably more than a lot of people have. Um, but you you liked the story of, of uh, being in Sierra Leone, and I met a teacher of the ancient Sierra Leone religion, and and um, he was teaching me and my friend. Uh, one evening, I, I, telling us just tons of truths, more than my mind could, could hold on to. And, and then it, after a period of time, he said, uh, okay, now it's time to show you. And, and he burnt some some herbs on the fire, and in front of our eyes, it turned into a large snake and started withering on the ground. Um, eventually, he turned back, and he said, okay, that, that, was, that was the grand finale. You can leave now. In, in, uh, in the Amazon jungle, I met more than one shaman who uh, could turn into an animal being um, and, and then back. Uh, uh, there's, Castaneda gave it a term, which I never heard anyone else give it, which was uh, connecting points. Uh, and, and apparently where our spirit and bodies connect, if I have not been able to do it, and I'm spending time meditating on it, doing ritual on it, but uh, some things we're supposed to do, some things we're not. Uh, and, and you can connect these points and actually ship your shape, your shape um, into other animals. Okay, so it actually happens. It actually happened. Uh, I knew personally a woman who had studied with Castaneda um, side by side, Marilyn Tanishende, um, I believe she's passed now. She disappeared, but uh, she she 
she was capable of doing this and, and I saw it. I saw her do it. Um, um, and, and I've seen others. Um, it is doable. And, and uh, we have more abilities. A lot of them uh, have been lost. A lot of them have been hidden. <coughs> but they're, 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 they're doable. Things like shape-shifting. Uh, along that line, on a very simple uh, level, but personally experienced, I was in the Amazon one time, and the shaman, I was asking the shaman to teach me his secrets, and um, he was a little hesitant. And this fisherman farmer walked in very ill, and, and the shaman said, okay, I will teach you something if you will uh, lend your energies to me. And I said, okay. So he touched my forehead and, and, uh, and the farmer fisherman's forehead, and all of a sudden I was looking out of the farmer fisherman's eyes. And I could look at me, and he was looking out of my eyes. And wow. I was trying to understand his life. I could see he was having a harder time understanding mine. Um, and I got this, this sense of how connected to the earth and the river and his family and, and, and his, his acquaintances he was and how when things went bad, they went so bad and how ill he was at the time. And, and, and it, I, I just, I got this knowing that I just never had on a personal experience level. And, and I could see his kind of going like, uh, uh, short circuiting. And then eventually the, the shaman touched both our foreheads and I was back in my own body. Um, wow. and, and both of us were going, wow, wow, wow. We gave each other a big hug. And then the shaman said, okay, he's better now. Thank you for doing that. And, and the fish and stood up and, and, and looked great and walked out of the hut. And so it helped to heal him that he did that. Yes. I'm officially boggled. I'm, it's a good story, and I lived through it. Could I repeat it? Do I know how he did it? Uh-uh. That is amazing. It was. I mean, and, and really, to have been in somebody else's head and have a clear memory of it in somebody else's life. Uh, to this day, it's, when I tell the story, it's, it said she was at my spot. Yeah, and our medical community thinks they're so damn smart, don't they? Uh, someone said, I, I'm not a conspiracyist, but somebody said that uh, uh, in the United States, food isn't really produced to feed us, and medicine isn't really produced to heal us. In, in, in a lot of Latin America, they call U.S. medicine death medicine because you only use it when you're getting near dying. Isn't that something? Wow. All right, so... So the shape-shifting rearranges the literal molecules in your body to turn you into an animal and then turns them back into you yeah without harm yeah. at all at all no i and think then this other feature that we just witnessed allows your essence your spirit your spirit to exchange with the spirit of another person and that helps to heal that other person's body. There's another story in, in Travel Tales. Um, my wife and I uh, were sitting on our back porch in, in Virginia overlooking um, this huge garden we were blessed with and, and, and creek. And um, we, were, we were bringing in energies. We were opening up the energies. And uh, I started speaking in a, in a very strange, kind of gravelly voice. And, and uh, I said to my wife, I feel like I'm a, a walking mountain. And, and she said, you know, you look a little like you have the feel of an armadillo. <laughs> and, and, uh, 
and I and I kind of went deeper into the trance, and I said, "There's an entity in me that's from another dimension, and he lives on what we would call a floating island, floating in in the air, and but it's connected by rivers that he floats down to go to other islands where he teaches the the knowledge he's been exposed to and helps heal the, their their communities." Um, and he doesn't use words of telepathy to communicate. He grows new limbs, which he paints pictures with in the air to communicate. And the pictures only last as long as they're needed to communicate what he wants. And then they vanish. And his limb vanishes. Um, when he's done, he goes back to his island. <clears throat> but it's often been taken over by these bat-like creatures who have pooped all over the island, so he has to clean off his island so he can rest in the poop. Um, and, and he felt our energies and wanted to come through because he thought we were doing something similar, passing out information and a certain amount of healing. And, and uh, he, he's fascinated by how different our realities are. Well, when, when I was done, my view of how expanded our realities are was quite expanded. I'll say. I think I remember that. Was that in the book? Yeah, that was in the book. That was one of the ones I put in the book. Yeah, I, I, I think I remembered that. Boggling. The, um, the the point is is just that our realities are so much more. At one point, I, I um, was practicing astral traveling, which is something everybody can learn to do. Um, and for me to do it, I have to really work up to it for a week of fasting and, and focusing. But it can be done. I, I've actually gone to friends' houses. And then the next day, I called them and said, "Did you get a new couch?" And they said, "Yeah, how did you know?" Um, so it can be done. But I was practicing astral traveling, and, and I wanted to go to other dimensions, and I wanted to go to far out dimensions, and and in different dimensions, different species have evolved. Um, whether they're armadillos who grow new appendages or thinking. Um, dolphins or, or spiders, that, or octopuses that, that have evolved into sensible beings. And, and in this particular one, it really stretched me because it was rutabagas that evolved. They were a thinking being who could <laughs> themselves. <laughs> Communicating with them was a challenge, but they but in that reality, that was the thinking, motivating, sentinel force. Right. <laughs> Ruta Vegas, honestly. Beyond my imagination, I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, I think the book is just wonderful. Thank you. I really do. It's it's it rings with honestly honesty and clarity. And yet, and your emotions are genuine. You're scared when you should be scared. Thank you, yeah. But, but you know, you really are not always scared when you should be scared. I don't know why. You've, you've got this joie de vivre. It's like, if if this kills me, it does. But I hope not. That's sort of your attitude. The belief that we're we're really immortal beings, that when we pass, we exist on another level. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, yeah, you know, yeah. You you really it's sort of a what the heck kind of when attitude. Yeah. Father, very young. My father made me touch a dead body, and and uh, I felt a spark go up my arm to my heart, and, and I looked over my left shoulder, and there was this cloudy figure floating there. I always kind of thought it was an essence of death. And and whenever I'm like, should I do this or not? I look over my left sh shoulder and, and uh, 
death says, if you don't do it, you'll always regret it. If you do it now, I might not take you. I told my wife that story when we were first uh, meeting. She said that's the best pickup line she had ever heard. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Lord. Oh, my goodness. I think the two of you were made for one another. Let me tell you, I I, I, I was... uh, in uh, Peru, uh, working on a book, and and um, I got on a bus to go from Cusco to Lake Titicaca, but I almost missed the bus. And, I, and and when I got on, it was only one seat left, and it was next to this beautiful woman. Uh, and it's a five-hour bus ride from Cusco to Lake Titicaca, so we talked the whole way um, because we had so many things not in common and in common. She was there on a vacation from Sweden um, where she was in Sweden. She was managing a a, um, social service to help people rehab and and get back into life um, agency. And and, uh, when we got to um, Puno on the shore of Lake Titicaca, where my son was born, actually, she, uh, she said, well, it's been nice meeting you. And we shook hands. We parted ways. And I was like, Oh, I don't think she liked me. Um, because we didn't exchange phone numbers or emails or anything. And, and I'm not one to get smitten easily, but uh, I I looked around Puno for two days to see if I could bump into her and she was nowhere to be seen. So I took a bus over to Copacabana on the other side of the lake and, and went out to the Isle of the Sun and the Isle of the Moon where, where the Incas believed the universe was created. And and uh as I was walking up the hill from the lake, she came walking down. I, and she ran to me and she hugged me. She said, You're not getting away this time. And, and I we, remember this. This is in the book. I yeah, remember this. Yeah. We, we did a, a, we, we did something like a, a 13 month email Zoom courtship uh, until she came over and we traveled to Mexico for six months and realized. Ah, we really are meant for each other. And then it was a matter of figuring out the, the dynamics so we could live together and get married. No, no, that that, that was a really nice story. Yeah. Okay. Magic keeps happening. Well, I just can't believe we've already run out of time. <laughs> are, are we doing it now? Oh, okay. Well, I have a number of books on Amazon. Uh, and, and, uh, Travel Tales from the Unknown Reality might be the best written because it's the most recent one. I like to think I'm evolving and getting better in my writing. Um, and and uh, I'm available to people if they want to communicate. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I don't know. I have three or four Facebook you pages. A, you must have a um, website. I don't. I let it fall off. It was getting a lot to maintain. I'm going to rekindle it. I, we, I have Lens and Access in Marketing, which I do uh, to pay the bills. Um, so that's there, but, uh, I, I put a lot of things, I have a author's page on Facebook, Michael Peter Langevin, um, that I put a lot of things on and then I'm on Zoom and I'm on TikTok. Uh, I mean, I'm on, uh, I, we, I, there's a YouTube channel and I'm on TikTok. So, so I, I am very available and my email is michaelpeterlangevin at gmail.com. If anyone has questions and, uh, I'm, I generally find the time to get back to people. So you, you just want me to put your email in the on, in, as the uh, contact? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Well, that's most people say go to my website. Well, but I'll give people your email. I totally. I like that hands-on experience. I get to know people that that have read the book and been touched by it. But I just think people should read this book. I think it's so entertaining. It Thank really you. is. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but um, please consider yourself hugged. I, I just think I've never met anybody with your kind of courage. Crazy courage, but courage, you well, know, that, courage is courage. Like I said, I enjoy life immensely. I feel very blessed. Um, and and, uh, and it's great to have experiences that a lot of people haven't had. Let's just, let's just say almost nobody has had a lot of <laughs> you know, I try to be humble. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> But no, I I I've really enjoyed uh, 
enjoyed meeting you and I as I, I really enjoyed your book. So well, consider yourself hugged and and um send me it, wait, what's your second favorite book and we'll we'll do this again. Oh okay good yeah I will I I yeah I think my second favorite book is out of print but it's available online as an ebook the secrets of the Amazon Shamans. Um yeah whatever it is but send me a PDF because I, I Cool. I, I can't do real books anymore. There's no room, more room literally in my house. Okay. My I left Northern California, it took up the house. <laughs> my, my husband literally says, if I bring one more book into this house, it's him or the books, one or the yeah. other, I can choose. No, my, my house in Northern California was somewhere between a museum and a, and a, and a library. Um, <laughs> right. It's... it's time to move on, so I let it all go. Yeah, it, it's, it really is... Uh, I mean, I love my books, but I, I have to love him more at this point. <laughs> have to make choices about it. Oh, my dear friends, and and my and you're now you're one of my friends. I have to say, I really enjoyed talking with Thank you. Thank you so much, to you. Oh, anyway, well, this has been great. I'm I, I knew this was going to be fun to do this again, but once again, my beloved friends, we've come to the end of our time together. And this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm very glad you could be with us today. Hasn't this been fun? Please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began, you never will end. And when you get that, it changes everything in your life for the better. Next week, our guest will be Brenda Rice. Brenda is rapidly becoming our Seek Reality Forgiveness Guru. And she's going to be with us for the fourth time to talk about her five-step forgiveness process. As you know, Jesus taught and he made a very big thing about our need to always forgive everything and everyone seven times, 70 times, and especially including forgiving ourselves. Brenda has some lovely and gracious ideas about how best to do that, so please be sure to join us next week. And today we've been talking with Michael Peter Langevin, who's been here for the second time to talk further about his life and his book, Travel Tales from Unknown Realities. And as you can see, Michael Peter is a wonderful wonderful guy and he's the real deal he doesn't just talk about the amazing things that are theoretically possible but he's been there he's done that and he's had every ticket punched i really love that about him these things are all possible shape-shifting disappearing all the rest all possible and because they i know they're possible i've always stayed as far away from them as i possibly can stay but i think it's wonderful there's someone like michael peter who's willing to visit the wilds at the very edges of these consciousness realities for the rest of us and come back and tell us about them like shape shifting you heard him describe it it's real it's just rare and if you're so inclined you can find the places where there are people who still do these things. Because he survived and he came back to tell the tales, I recommend his book without reservation. And it's called, again, Travel Tales from Unknown Realities. It's a very exciting book. I couldn't put it down, frankly. And now, of course, it's time once again to mention that Seek Reality Online is your one-stop resource for all things afterlife. Just go to seekreality.com and start to learn for yourself that your own reality is eternal, whether you like it or not. Learn the ultimate truth from our dear friend, Craig Hogan, who's the president of Seek Reality Online, and he's your one-stop resource for everything, everything about all things afterlife. And teachingsbyjesus.com is your single resource for all the beautiful divine truths that are brought to us in perfect love by the greatest teacher of them all, Master Jesus. It really is Jesus' turn. As Christianity, the religion that was created by the Roman Emperor Constantine and not by Jesus, finally dies, the genuine teachings of Jesus can at last truly come alive for us all. You know what my books are, because we I don't really have time, actually, at this point, to talk even about what my own books are, but you know what they are. They're on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com, and the adult books, except the last, are also available as audiobooks. If you want to talk about anything at all, just 
go to the green contact block under bertagrimes.com and contact me. I answer every email as long as I have your correct email address. And all of the more than 500 past episodes of Seek Reality are available wherever audio podcasts can be found, or you can listen to the new audio episodes each week with the Seek Reality app you can find wherever free apps are available. You can see the new video episodes each week on Roku or Fire Stick, YouTube, and elsewhere. And meanwhile, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy and make the most of this coming week in our one reality, always knowing that you are a powerful, eternal being, and you most of all in this entire universe, you are infinitely, eternally, and perfectly and forever loved. You've been listening to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share. Knowing the truth changes everything.